peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you haven't picked up on it by now, our focus this morning is on the last day. And our lessons, the last ones for the church year, they teach us that all of our earthly pursuits will cease. The end is certain. The last judgment, it's coming. So let us pray. These are your words, Holy Father. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Well, our gospel lesson takes place during Holy Week. The context is Jesus speaking of the need to be watchful, to be ready for his return. And this is the capstone of his teaching. For the main character, the bridegroom, he finally appears. We're told of ten young girls, five wise, five foolish. They are on their way to a wedding ceremony, and there's no doubt in my mind that they are giddy with delight. Since receiving the invitation to be a bridesmaid, they expect nothing but tea and cake and posting selfies on social media, if they had it. Prior to this, the bridegroom and the bride would be betrothed, just like Joseph and Mary when the angel Gabriel appeared to her. During the betrothal, this is what I was sharing over in our Bible study this morning, the bridegroom would return to his father's house and he builds on to it, making preparations for his future wife and then subsequently for the children to come, Lord willing. The bridegroom would then tell his beloved, I go and I prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Sound familiar? Jesus said that, referring to himself as the bridegroom. And so at a specified time, the bridegroom, along with his friends, would then go with festival procession to the home of the bride. There they would meet the bride and her friends and family and all would process together to their new home for the consummation of the marriage and the wedding festivities. All right, so the bridesmaids, both the wise and the foolish, they have all arrived. But they don't know that the bridegroom is delayed. Girl talk and giggles go on into the evening Lamps are lit, and the wedding party, well, the wedding party turns into a slumber party. For all ten get drowsy, heads nod, and eventually they sack out. Now, first century lamps were very small. They could fit in the palm of one's hand. They're saucer-shaped vessels with a cover and what looked like a, a spout for a wick. They were not made to burn all night. And that's why the wise girls, the sensible girls, bring extra oil. As everyone snoozes, one awakes to see and to hear the approaching company off in the distance, and the cry is made, the bridegroom's here, come out to meet him. To all the girls, they jump up, they print their hair, and they gather their things, and the wicks are trimmed. Now keep this in mind, and I mean no offense in saying this, but the ancient Jewish culture, the emphasis was not placed upon the bride like it is in our culture. The emphasis was upon the bridegroom. He's here! But not everyone is ready. The foolish girls, they discover their oil has run out. However, the wise girls, the ones who insisted upon bringing extra oil, are asked to share what they have. There won't be enough for us if we give what we have to you. Which is true. If this request is granted, there was the danger that all would lack enough and all would be refused admission to the party. And the, the wise, they're just not going to risk that. 
So they tell the foolish girls to go get their own. We cannot share. And while they're gone, the bridegrooms arrive, or the bridegroom arrives, those who are prepared, that being the wise, they go in with him and the door is shut. Sometimes, sometime later, the fools return and they're saying as they're knocking, Lord, Lord, open up unto us. But the bridegroom answers, truly, I say to you, I do not know. And the parable ends right there. Jesus concludes it saying, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Now, it's very tempting for all of us to kind of get sidetracked when we hear this parable. Sidetracked wondering why the wise girls didn't share. And where in the world were the foolish girls going to get oil at this time of night? But this is a parable, folks. We don't want to make the parable walk on all fours. We want to keep the main thing the main thing. As I said, the Lord Jesus is the bridegroom who has no doubt been greatly delayed. And just as the ten fell asleep waiting on Him to return, so the vast majority of us will most likely do the same. We will fall asleep in Jesus, meaning that we will sleep in death before He comes. Yet, there's no guarantee of that, for we know neither the day nor the hour. Therefore, our entire lives are to be lived in joyful expectation that the bridegroom could come at any moment. And when he does, the dead will be raised from their sleep, the living will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, and all creation, a new glorified humanity, with a new heavens and a new earth, they will all stand before him. Folks, the Bible begins with a marriage where our first parents, namely Adam and Eve, were united in holy matrimony. And here we learn that God in Christ Jesus unites Himself with His people, the church, just as a bridegroom to the bride. And guess what? There's a party, a real big one, one you don't want to miss. And so we wait for the reappearing of our hidden bridegroom, who has promised, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Truth is, some will be prepared for this day, and others, they won't. Some will go into the party, and some, they don't. Some go to heaven, some don't. And the one question I have for you at the conclusion of this church year is, will you be ready? Will you be ready to follow Him into the eternal marriage feast or will you find yourself outside in eternal darkness? For those who find themselves outside the marriage feast with the door shut and no hope of entering in, they are the biggest fools of all. I heard a woman just this week say something to the effect of, I mean, it took me, it took me a second to process what she said because she said, uh, I, she said, She said, she said, I am so bad, y'all. There's a hell, and I'm going to it. And she wasn't saying this like condemning herself. She, was, she seemed to be pretty proud of it. No problem. And I thought, my God, Lord have mercy. You are the biggest fool of all. I mean, does being ready take being a member of Mensa or being a member of... Phi Beta Kappa, or an incredibly high score on your SAT? Not at all. St. Paul writes, the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Foolish then are those who think that the cross of Jesus is foolish. 
So, who then are the wise? St. Paul writes, because of God, you are in Christ who became to us the wisdom of God. The wise are those who have Christ. For Christ has not only become to us wisdom from God, but also righteousness, sanctification, and redemption itself. The foolish virgins are foolish because they reject Christ. The wise virgins are wise because they have Christ. Those who have Christ have wisdom. Those who have wisdom, they have oil and light and entrance into the marriage feast. All right, so for those of us who have Christ, how do we keep watch? Well, we wait for the one who is to come by watching the one who has come. And we have and we have Him in the proclamation of His forgiveness. We have Him in the washing of the labor of baptism. We have Him in the preaching of His word. And we have Him in the eating of His supper. And when the bridegroom finally appears and is no longer hidden, you will see Him and you will be ready. You will trim your lamps and you will go into the wedding feast of heaven that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For you have been watching by faith all along. And so at the close of yet another church year, we join with churches on earth and we join with the saints of heaven saying, Maranatha, come soon, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. We have a hymn that we're going to sing in preparation for our baptism. You can see it marked there, hymn number 593.